Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to today's edition of Advanced Bass Fishing and really appreciate you guys coming by the channel to spend some time with me and watch the video. Always really appreciate that. And guys, today I'm going to give you sort of a little advanced tutorial on selecting the right jerkbait color. There's a lot to consider here as far as, uh, you know, what colors work best under certain situations. And the thing about jerk baits is since they are basically a sight bait, you know, the fish feed on them and strike them out of a visual strike instead of like a vibration strike, color becomes really important. So we're going to get into that in today's video. I'm also, guys, a quick reminder, you may have known that last week I was telling you guys we, not, we launched my new uh, Block It Throwback Jig from Cumberland Pro Lures and they sold out the first day or they were up on the Tackle Warehouse website, but they got them back in stock now. So if you guys are interested in getting some of my uh, Block It Throwback Jigs, I'll put my uh, Throwback Jig link in the description through Tackle Warehouse and you get them. We've got six colors available. So I um, just want to let you guys know that, that they're back in stock over there. Okay guys, we've done a lot of stuff on jerk baits on all three of my channels. We'll continue doing stuff on it because jerk bait is a phenomenal bass catcher. Um, it's a good bait 12 months out of the year. It's primarily known as a cold water bait. But one of the elements of jerk baits that makes it such a difficult bait to master, because in my opinion, jerk bait fishing is the most difficult technique to master in fishing because there's so many different, you know, things that affect whether fish bite it or not. Um, it's one of those things is color choice. And I want, I sort of want to give you guys sort of some guidelines on how to choose the right color jerk bait based upon the conditions you're fishing. So um, we're going to get into some detail on that. So first of all, guys, the, the jerk bait I'm talking about here is the Mega Bass uh, Vision 110 and the other Mega Bass jerk baits. Guys, this may sound like a Mega Bass commercial, but I can assure you this is the best jerk bait in the world. You, there, everybody tries to duplicate it. Every pro angler's got them in their box, and whether they talk about it or not, it's the number one jerk bait in the in the world. Um, I'll put my Mega Bass uh, the jerk bait link in the Tackle Warehouse description in this video if you guys want to check them out. But bar none, if you guys want to excel at jerk bait fishing, you need to use Mega Bass jerk baits, and a lot of it has to do with the internal balancer system that's went in it, the profile, the colors they offer, the action that the lure has. They're just the best that they are, without a doubt, and. and most pros are going to tell you that, you know, whether they admit it or not, if they're sponsored by another company. So as far as that goes, but the, one of the things about the mega bass line of jerk baits is they've got hundreds of different colors of jerk baits. So obviously nobody can have every hundred, hundred different colors of jerk baits. <clears throat> so you sort of have to narrow down, you know, if a few colors it will allow you to fish in all different color uh, condition applications, which we're going to talk about today. Now, when you're talking about jerk baits and colors, instead of like getting caught up on like a specific color, you need to think about your colors in three different categories. One is a flat finish. Now, a flat finish is like this, where it's a solid color. You can't see through it. There's no shine on it. It's just a flat matte finish. That's one category. The next category is some type of a translucent color. Like you can see my finger behind that moving. This is a see-through jerk bait. For a different set of conditions we'll talk about and finally you have a metallic finish something with some type of a full finish that shines bright like that those are the three categories of jerk bait so when, when you're starting to think about your jerk bait fishing you know think about it in those terms of um you know the category rather than specific colors because as long as you stay within that category based upon the conditions that you're fishing you're gonna be okay. I mean, everybody's gonna have their specific favorite colors they like, but I prefer to stay in the generic sense of the category. So let's go through each one of them. I'll we'll sort of talk about, you know, the best scenarios for them. So the first one, let's talk about the, the clear translucent colors right here. Now, since this is a clear color, this is obviously gonna be a good clear water bait. So without a doubt, anytime that you have clear water situation, water visibilities of over four feet, you need some type of a translucent color for the most part. Another time that a translucent color works good is, is on bright days where you don't have much wind. And the reason for this is clear is a little bit more subtle color. So when you have uh, like clear water conditions and it's bright and sunny out and there's not much wind, those fish don't want to chase. They're spooky. They're a lot more wary because they can see better. And any time that a bass can see better, it's going to be harder to catch them because they can study any imperfection in what, the way a lure looks. And if you use a clear jerk bait or translucent finish like that, clear water, bright sunny conditions, or not much wind, 
this is the best color to use. Now, I'm not saying that's the only color, the only color they're gonna hit in that, but that is the best color under those situations. So in my, uh, all the fishing that I've done for jerkbait fishing in the past, the cleaner the water, the more I go to the translucent, even if it's cloudy or raining or whatever, it just seems like it works a lot better in those situations. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, the matte finishes or the solid colors like this, this is a good color for any type of off colored water situation because when you have a painted finish like this, it has more of a glow in the water. Now most of the painted finishes are some type of a pearl or a white or some type of a chartreuse for the most part. And when you put a pearl or a white or chartreuse bait that has a flat mass matte finish in a, any type of like off colored water, say when the water visibility is under two foot, it has a completely different look to it. The bait actually has a little glow around it and that allows that fish to hone in on that bait a lot more. So this is the time that I use, you know, the flat finish. And also I'll use flat finish, even if the water clarity is a little bit cleaner on the low light day. So let's say guys, you're out there and you've got water visibility, say three or three and a half feet maybe even four feet and you've got, it's raining out and the wind's blowing 20 miles an hour. This is a good color because during those low light conditions that reduces a bat, bass's ability to see and they make a mistake more. And another thing about it, out of, the, out of the three colors here, if you can get a bass to hit a flat finish, they're usually larger bass for whatever reason. I don't catch as many bass on a flat finish, although I, you know, I still catch a lot, but not as many as the others. But in general, the bass that you can catch on a flat finish are a little larger simply because of the way the bait looks in the water. And the third one, guys, is any type of metallic finish. This is called a GG finish in the Mega Bass color line. But a metallic color like this, it's really good on windy days. It's like, if, the, if, you, if you're out there on one of those days where it's just blowing hard 15, 20 miles an hour, I do really good on a metallic in almost any weather conditions associated with a windy day. Stain, stain water, you know, just that nice in-between water, like the two and a half to four foot visibility and in clean water. It works really good in a situation like that. Also, you're gonna find out that a metallic finish works better if you have some type of cloud cover for the most part. You don't have to have it, especially if you have the wind, but I like a metallic finish on those sort of those, you know, heavy partly cloudy days where, where maybe you've got enough clouds out there where say, 75% of the time the sun is behind a cloud and then 25% of the time the sun comes out. That is when a metallic finish works really good under those situations. Um, a lot of it, that's a general foundation with it though. A lot of this has to do with just what the bass want that particular day. This is a, this is a good starting point for you. And then you can adjust based upon how the bass are reacting to it. But other factors that include color, it has to do with the species of bass that you're fishing for. Largemouth spotted bass and smallmouth all, ha all have different color preferences. Again, based upon the place you're fishing for them. The water clarity, you know, the water, you know, the tint of the color of the water. Tint of another, the watercolor tint has, is something that doesn't get talked about because the tint has to do with like the water makeup. Say for example, if you're fishing in Florida, you can have some clear water down there, like four foot of visibility or more, but it's got that black tannic water, tannic color to it because of the vegetation. And then if you're in my part of the country with a lot of the algae and plankton, you may have some clean water, but it has a little green tint. And if you're fishing up north, like on the Great Lakes, like St. Clair, it can be clear water, but it could have more of an aqua blue look. And every one of those tints also require a different color choice based upon the wind and the cloud conditions at the time that you're fishing. If it sounds complicated, it is complicated because there's no, there's no right or wrong reason on this. It's like the reproductible results that I have gotten with a jerk bait are what I just covered, those three different categories under those conditions. But a lot of times that, that is not necessarily hold true. It does most of the time. What I just told you guys holds true probably 75% of the time, but there is 25% of the time where they may hit a flat matte finish in real clear water with no wind if you're fishing for smallmouth bass. In another time, you know, they may hit, you may be in dirty water and it could be a condition where there's some spotted bass in there like Alabama spotted bass and they want a translucent color. 
So the, here's the best way to really hone in on the best colors. Start out with the foundational advice I just gave you there. And if you get into an area where you, you're getting some bites on a jerk bait, and say you're catching them on a metallic finish, and you know the fish are there, and you've got, say you're running points, and you're catching fish on every two or three points, that is when you want to experiment with colors. Once you know the fish are there, try some different colors, and based upon the mood and the personality of the bass that particular day you're out there, they may prefer one color over another. And that's, the, that's why Mega Bass has 100 different colors out there, because you never know what they want to bite. But it's a fascinating technique, guys. Um, I would highly encourage everybody to get into jerkbait fishing. It's probably, the one, it's probably one of the top three funnest ways to catch a fish, in my opinion. And that's what makes it so cool is it is a challenging technique. And we'll, we'll do other videos on it. I've done some um, hour-long seminars on them, too. You guys can go back and look in some of my past videos. But we'll keep uh, talking about them because we're getting up into jerkbait season over the next two or three months. So we'll keep honing away on that. So hope it helps out, guys. We'll talk later.